the next domino and the one that I spent all night talking to people with front office people, agents, whatever is Durant and the vultures are going to circle on Durant. Those vultures expect the nets to, to put on a strong face for a while to not rush it to, um, to, to posture probably honestly that no, we, he has four years left on his contract. Just like over the summer, he's got four years left. We control the situation. We're trying to win. We don't want to do this. I, I would guess Durant doesn't want to just go out and do the trade request again, because this is just all so ugly. He, he it's, it, I, I would, I would guess that he sort of skulks, not skulks, but just sort of sits in the background, at least in this regard. The Nets also, you know, December 15th and especially January 15th, a whole slew of players become tradable that are critical here. So I don't think this is going to be fast. I don't know that it will ever really happen, but I, I know that the whole league is ready now to re-engage on Durant. And like I said, I think the landscape has changed. So you're the you're the CBA trade guru expert. Um, I've got my list of teams. Some of them are duplicates from the summer. Um, you can start anywhere you want on the Durant trade landscape. Yeah, I mean, I think that, as you said, like, I don't think that there would be a point where he does ask out. I think the schedule itself might just take care of that. <laughs> I mean, you look at what I haven't, they even, have. I haven't even looked at the schedule, Bobby. Yeah, I, I mean, I here can't. it is. Here's here it is. With that. You've got Washington, Charlotte. When you can Charlotte with, you know, they're decimated. Dallas, Knicks, Clippers, Lakers, Sac, Portland, Memphis, Philly. It's not easy. It's not an easy schedule here. So when you look at the landscape of the league right now, you've got 34% of the players that can't be traded. You mentioned December 15th, January 15th. That's that will certainly open up based on players who signed as free agents here. Um, it's interesting. You have to, you go back to the teams that we've talked about during the summer, like Toronto. Pascal Siakam's playing, man. He, he's like playing like an all NBA player right now. Uh, uh, right? He's playing like a first team all NBA player right now. So that was the name we've talked about. Oh, hey, by the way, Scotty Barnes, they laugh you right off the phone now. <laughs> don't even, don't even, Bob, don't even say, don't even say the S word. Just don't, well, call I, us when you're ready to not say the S word. I don't even think they would trade Siakam. You know? I, mean, look, I mean, that would be a, a tough, that's something you, you know, like that, that wasn't it. That's not a shoe in here. Well, and, and the Raptors are one of my teams, obviously, for obvious reasons, even if they're not going to include those guys, they still have all their picks and a bunch of salary. Yeah. That's at least interesting and all the swaps and all that. So sh sure. Yeah. I mean, like, they'd, they'd, they'd take a call. I'm sure. sure. Yeah. I mean, so Toronto, you're looking at, let's just say remove Siakam. You're looking at OG and um, Trent, right. And the picks. I mean, that's kind of like, that's, that's the profile in this, in any of these Durant deals though, Zach, I'm just thinking of this, like you got to get point guard back to somewhere, right? Like I just look at, there's not, and that's the problem with the Irving situation is that like, you don't have like a um, Trey Jones in your waiting in your wings as your second, your, as your backup, your nice developmental piece, right? There's no, there's no point guard there. So that's why I'm looking. And I know that Toronto doesn't do that for you. If I'm doing, if I'm looking at Durant stuff, like I need something back. I need a point guard back here, but I mean, I need you, a, you know what I need a drink. That's what, <laughs> that's what I need a drink more than what? a, more than a young point guard. I need to go to the liquor store and get a goddamn crate of whatever my favorite drink is. That's what I need. Only, how about we're only two weeks into the season? And I've already felt like uh, I, we already need all, the all-star break. What the <laughs> hell we thought Toronto? Oh, the point guard. I don't I, honestly like, yeah, what you're saying makes sense. At this point, it's just, I just need, I just need whatever helps me recalibrate my team. And I don't know that I'm that concerned about it. Uh, what other teams that pick any team? I was going to say what other teams that maybe weren't, weren't in the, in the, heat of it in the summer might get into it now or or maybe one of those teams that you think has an even better shot now well i mean i think phoenix i think phoenix is and not not the you know certainly you know eight and you know can't be traded for but you know they're i think they're working more from a position of strength based on you know everyone we all thought that you know based on what what the, you know the they were going to stumble out of the gate based off that dallas series certainly the sarver situation you know, everybody was not happy media day and now they are, you know, six and one sec. Yeah. Second, third best team in the NBA. Um, you know, um, so I think Phoenix, they've got all these expiring contracts, you know, all the you, picks, four picks, picks, three swaps, 
you know, they could they can get up to uh, Durant's number without including Bridges or Aiton or you know, you I mean you could if you want to do that or wait you wait until January fifteenth and say this is what we have. But I think Phoenix would be certainly a team there. You know, it's interesting. I, I think your first the first reaction some fans might have to Phoenix would be, well, we're six and one, we don't need to do anything. And I think a smart team would actually think the opposite. We're six and one, but we're six and one, but your margin for error in the playoffs is so little. If we have that kind of opportunity with Chris Paul at age 37, you've got to consider it, if not execute it. The, the idea that they could do it without Aiton or Bridges, and I'm not even sure the Nets, I, I don't think the Nets like Aiton, and I don't think they view him as a, a great piece that they could flip down the road. Bridges is playing out of his mind to start the season. The idea that they could do it without including either of those guys is like, I, I mean, that's that's absolutely a no a no brainer to me but yeah they'll they'll get back into it yeah i mean um we'll see where this boston team goes right i mean i think if if they i mean they'll be better than a 500 team um but if they feel like he is a missing piece i would certainly think the celtics revisit it you know i would think jalen brown i don't think not the godfather gone i don't think the celtics even revisit it to be honest with you i think the celtics just say we made the finals yep um, Jalen Brown is playing really well. We've just gone through our own organizational trauma. We're not, we're not doing this. Um, by the way, a quote from Kevin Durant at shoot around today, Brian Lewis from the New York post tweeted this just now, Durant, I'm not here to judge somebody or talk down on the life or how they feel their views. I just didn't like anything that went on. I felt like it was unnecessary. I felt like we could have just kept playing basketball and kept quiet as an organization. I don't really know what that means. I, I mean, basically, you just wanted to sweep it away and for Joe side to basically pull Kyrie into a, a, an office and just reprimand him without anybody knowing. That's and then, and then means. again, here we go for another quote. Our, our producer Dan is sending me this. This is the this is Durant again, according to Brian Lewis at the New York Post. This is the way the NBA is now. The media, so many outlets now, and their stories hit pretty fast now. So that's where all the chaos is coming from. Everybody has an opinion on the situation and we're hearing it nonstop. The chaos is not coming from the media. The chaos is coming from inside the house. This is like when Durant said before the season, why are you guys going to keep asking me about my trade request? Because you requested a trade because you're one of the 10 or 12 best players in the entire history of the sport. And when someone of your caliber with four years on their contract that they just signed asked a to be traded and B, for the higher-ups on the team to be fired, I'm sorry to tell you that that's going to get more coverage than Nick Claxton's pick-and-roll defense and how that might fit with Ben Simmons. I'm sorry to tell you that the chaos has been completely self-created by Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, and when he was there, James Harden, by quitting on the team, but he's not there anymore. Like, there's just, I I don't know, I, I just... All of this stuff, all these comments are like, can we just play basketball again? Can we just talk about basketball? Even Sean Marks said it. Can we just talk about basketball? Sure. Your player just tweeted out a movie that denies the Holocaust. Sorry that for a week, that's kind of a big deal. Yeah, I mean, we could have talked about basketball if he would have handled the press conference last Saturday the right way, or if maybe the next day would have come out and, and kind of apologized. All I want to do is talk about basketball. Yeah, oh, I do too. I mean, I don't, this is not enjoyable. You what know? were we I mean, talking really- about? The Suns? Yeah, the Suns, cool. The Suns are really good. <laughs> Suns are really good. Well, I mean, it, I mean, we're kind of going back to some of these, you know, we're talk- going back to New Orleans again, right? Oh, New Orleans. <laughs> New Orleans was hesitant to trade Ingram the first time around, if not out and out a no on Ingram, which I, I, I said at the time, boy, I would, I think I'd be tempted to pull the trigger on that. Now it's like, how about the the Lakers pick looks like more valuable than Brandon Ingram. So how about we just give you all the picks, some young guys, some salary matching, which we have in spades. And we have CJ McCollum, Brandon Ingram, Kevin Durant, Zion Williamson, and whatever else is left over. Yeah. That's 150 million bucks for four guys in a small market. That's going to have some tax issues down the road, but I mean, I don't, if I'm New Orleans, you have to think about that. If the cost sure. is just the picks and the swaps and a couple of young guys that are interesting and I don't have to give up BI, like, I, are, am I, um, is my team the title favorite? Like um, immediately? I, I don't know that the NBA is still topsy turvy right now. They're, they're, they're at the top of my list. Same with Memphis. Yeah. Memphis. No, 
I mean, that's that's another team, you know, Memphis without has the Warriors know. pick top four protected. The Warriors are three and seven or three and six or whatever the hell they are now after another loss in Orlando last night where Steph Curry looked amazing and they still lost. Got the Warriors pick, got all my own picks, got swaps. Hey, you can't get Ja, duh. You can't get Bane. You can't get Jaron Jackson Jr. That, that You don't like that? Too bad. Here's everything we got to offer. Like, I'm if I'm Memphis, like, uh, that makes me the championship favorite. Maybe I have to think about that. Yeah, I mean, here you go. I mean, Tyus Jones, Dylan Brooks, and Danny Green, and goodbye. Whatever picks. Goodbye. Enjoy yep. Brooklyn. Yep. That's Joe that's Johnson once. Joe Johnson once said, "It's not that bad here about Brooklyn. It's not that bad there. Enjoy." <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> they should just change that to their slogan. I've said it before. Like things are so bad there that they should actually just make that their slogan to counteract the badness of it. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.